This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. Warning, vulgarity awaits. What's going on guys? This is Vinyl Lake Puma and today I am back with another top 20 except this time we're going to be looking at the top 20 legendaries in Borderlands the pre-sequel. So let's go. Number 20. The Pitchfork. The Pitchfork is a returning sniper rifle from Borderlands 2. This time around, however, it's ultimately more useful as there are many enemies like Iwajira and the Empyrean Sentinel that have massive critical hit spots. The only problem with this thing is that it has burst fire and, like the sloth, <coughs> I'm, I mean, the wet week, it has a lot of recoil. Number 19. The Fatale. All right, so those of you that have been around for a while uh, know that I get pretty flustered when it comes to trying to figure out whether the Fatale is a precursor, successor, or pre-sequel to the bitch from Borderlands 2. And really the best way to describe the Fatale is that it is essentially the bitch, but it only comes in cryo. So that's pretty much it. Number 18. The Stormfront. The Stormfront is another returning legendary from Borderlands 2, and in Borderlands the pre-sequel, the Stormfront is a very effective grenade mod when it comes to dealing damage directly to enemies. It's worth mentioning that the Stormfront doesn't benefit greatly from the reduced gravity that's prominently featured in many areas within the game, as child prongs have a tendency to fly further away from the central prong, reducing the Stormfront's effectiveness. Number 17. The Hellfire. A favorite from Borderlands 1 and 2, the Hellfire is an all-round great fire SMG. While it's not effective in areas with a vacuum, the Hellfire really shines in the presence of an atmosphere. It's also really nice with Athena's Saronic Storm skill tree and the Maelstrom stack mechanic. I just wish there were more non-elemental variants of Malawan legendary SMGs. Number 16. The Longest Yard. The Longest Yard is a Hyperion railgun laser with 100% accuracy, which is technically 100% precision, as precision is how consistently you fire into a spot and not necessarily the quote, right spot. Uh, while you have been lied to, I still recommend you pick this laser up as it's a nice alternative to a sniper rifle and it can come in all elements. Number 15. The Excalibastard. You know, shout out goes to Xavier Fernandez for picking up on my Soul Eater reference on my top five legendary lasers in Borderlands the pre-sequel video. Uh, by the way, if you want to try a new anime, uh, I recommend you go ahead and check out Soul Eater. Uh, but I digress. Now as for the Excalibastard, critical hits have a 100% chance to freeze enemies and it's also a pretty sick melee weapon. Uh, as I've said before, you literally can go pick this up, provided you are badass enough. Number 14, the Thunderfire. You know, we desperately need more dual element weapons in Borderlands, and the Thunderfire, I think, is a great example of how to do dual element weapons correctly. Uh, unlike weapons like the Frostfire, you don't incur a ridiculous movement penalty, or the Minax Atonement, which is like a multi-element weapon, it, it doesn't suck ass. Uh, but anyway, um, the Thunderfire fits perfectly with Athena's skill tree, and I think in future Borderlands games, hopefully they can design dual element weapons around specific characters, as that's going to make them more effective. Number 13, the Mongol. Another returning weapon from Borderlands 2, the Mongol is much better in this game not because it got a stat increase or anything, but it benefits from the overall verticality of the pre-sequel's level design. Uh, the Mongol also benefits from areas that have low gravity, as you can quickly increase your distance from enemies, maximizing the Mongol's damage potential. Number 12, the Torrent. Unlike the Emperor from Borderlands 2, the Torrent from Borderlands the pre-sequel is actually a really good gun. Not only does the Torrent have a really cool looking weapon skin, but it also is a very competent and effective SMG to use in combat. It should also be mentioned that when the pre-sequel first came out, the Torrent was probably one of the best SMGs in the game. Number 11, the Nukem. You know, I'm still waiting for that really good, groundbreaking, must-own Duke Nukem game. Wolfenstein's reboot and spin-off game were pretty badass, and Doom 4 is gonna be awesome too. All we need now is the Duke, and we'll be set. Uh, oh yeah, 
The Nukem is probably the best Torg rocket launcher in Borderlands the pre-sequel, and it pairs really well with the next weapon on this list. Number 10. The Flacker. Just like in Borderlands 2, the Flacker also benefits from the passive weapon effects glitch in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Not only can you flack all of Pandora with this exploit, but you can also flack all of Elpis as well. Um, all that's left now is the ability to flack the universe. Number 9. The Maggie. Another returning favorite from Borderlands 2, the Maggie was the best Jacob's Pistol up until the release of the Claptastic Voyage expansion for Borderlands the pre-sequel. It was pretty sick back then, and is still pretty awesome to this day. For Borderlands 3, we really need a companion weapon to the Maggie that is a reference to the Walking Dead TV show. And you know, for good measure, we also need some crossbows too. Number 8. The Bada Boom. You know the drill, high projectile count, low ammo consumption, and the ability to rocket jump, the Bada Boom is a great rocket launcher for all purpose use. Hopefully, we'll get some mods for Fallout 4 that manage to put weapons from the Borderlands franchise into Fallout 4. I mean, I'm ready to do some rocket jumping with my jetpacks and basically scale the world. Number seven, the Flare. While I consider the Flare to not be a particularly creative idea for a legendary weapon, it has a really ominous and cool looking weapon skin and is a significant improvement to the regular Jacob's Coach Gun that can be found throughout Borderlands the pre-sequel. I really like using this thing with Nisha as enemies just seem to die all around you. Number 6. The IVF. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and explain this gun in four words and then go on to the next weapon in this countdown. Awful name, amazing results. Number five, the long nail. While not as insane as the Lyuda slash White Death from Borderlands 2, the long nail is also based on the Droog sniper rifle, which is one of the best non-red text rifles in the game. Instead of having a projectile that splits it after a certain distance, the long nail can simply bypass shields, making cryo versions of this weapon very effective for freezing enemies that still have their shields up. Definitely not a pile of fuck. Number 4. The Laser Disker. If you have learned anything from me this year, just remember these two words. Fuck Tedior. They went from having amazing weapons in Borderlands the pre-sequel to having virtually awful weapons in Borderlands 2. You, you remember the bunny? What a boatload of ass! Why? Your guess is as good as mine. Number 3. The Absolute Zero. While this laser only comes in cryo, it has both the highest base damage and continuous damage bonus of any Malawan type laser. This is an extremely powerful laser and is recommended on pretty much every character. However, it does excel on Aurelia the Baroness and Wilhelm the Enforcer. Number two, the Luck Cannon. I think it's perhaps safe to say that the Luck Cannon is the most powerful pistol in Borderlands the pre-sequel. While it's virtually a bolt action, which I hate bolt actions, Nisha can expand the magazine size to four and dual wield it. Did I mention that this gun has a built-in money shot? Definitely awesome. Number one, Canada's laser. All right, three words this time because I'm basically doing four words, then two words, now three words. Go watch Akira. Anyway, Canada's laser is probably my favorite weapon in the game. It's just unfortunate that TDR stooped so low by the time of the events in Borderlands 2 because Canada's laser was probably TDR's magnum opus. And I bet Mr. Torg is pretty jealous. Anyway, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this top 20. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. And as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.